right, this is section 5.1, probability distributions. We're going to be doing 5.1, 5.2, and then 6.1, which is standard normal distributions, all together. So we're going to be looking at different ways um, to examine probability distributions. In 5.1, we're going to be talking about the random variable and the concept of a probability distribution. We're going to be looking at a probability histogram. And we're going to be looking at finding the mean standard deviation and variance for a probability distribution. And we're going to continue to discuss about whether outcomes are significant and what makes them significantly low or significantly high. These are the vocabulary and important terms for this section. A random variable is a variable that has a single numerical value determined by chance for each outcome of a procedure. A probability distri distribution is a description that gives the probability for each value of the random variable. So we're going to normally be looking at these as tables, formulas, or graphs, but more specifically as tables. So there's two different kinds of random variables we'll be talking about, a discrete and continuous, which is vocabulary we've seen before. But a discrete random variable is a collection of finite or countable variables. Whereas continuous is infinitely many, we can't really count them. So if we go back, a discrete would be kind of your number of tosses of a coin, whereas continuous would be like temperature, where there's infinitely many um, options in between each count. So these are the three considerations that we need to determine if something is a probability distribution. So the first thing we check is, is the data numerical? Is the random variable x numerical? then do all the probabilities add up to one. And there can be a little bit of space for um, rounding errors. And then is each individual probability between zero and one, remembering that probabilities must be between zero and one. So they give us this table and the question is determine whether a probability distribution is given. So these are the three things. We need to know one, is the um, random variable x numerical? And these values are numerical. The next thing we need to check is, does the sum of all the probabilities equal one? So we kind of sum up these probabilities here. And in fact, we do get one. So that works, 0.25 plus 0.5 plus 0.25. And the last thing is, is each probability provided in between zero and one? So yes, this is a probability distribution. And for those of you that like to read a little bit more carefully, here's some more work. We're going to do one more example. So hiring managers were asked to identify the biggest mistakes that job applicants make during an interview, and the table below is based on their responses. Is this a probability distribution? So the first thing we want to check is, is the random variable numerical? And it is not. So already I know that the answer is no, but let's double check the other things. The sum of the probabilities need to be one. It is not, so that's another reason why. But each of these probabilities are between zero and one, but it doesn't matter because if you violate one criteria, then it is not a probability distribution. And if you'd like to read, um, you can read that here. And then go ahead and give these two a try. Press play when you're ready to see the solution. And there we go. We can take a probability distribution, so this is from example one, and we can turn it into a probability histogram. So what we do is we take the random variables x and we place those on our x-axis or the horizontal axis, and then the probabilities themselves go on our vertical axis, and then we can graph um, accordingly. Now there is a probability formula. We will not actually be using it, so, um, but there is a probability formula as well. So you can look at it as a table, a graph, or a formula. So when we're looking at a probability distribution, we are looking at population data, which means that we're talking about the parameters and we're not actually talking about the statistics. And that's a vocabulary from previously, but we can find the mean variance and standard deviation with the following formulas. So mean, or mu, because we're talking about um, population here, sigma squared for variance and sigma. These two are exactly the same, and so it doesn't matter which one we end up using, but you'll see that um, we're gonna build a probability um, table to determine these items. 